this episode, we'll take a look at Active Admin. Uh, this gem here allows you to easily add an admin interface to your application. And not only does it look really great, but it's also very customizable. And they provide a live demo so you can check it out and see exactly how it all works and the way it looks. But here, let's dive in and see how to add it to an existing application. So here's the application we'll be working with. We have uh, an e-commerce style app where we have many products and each one has a price and it also belongs to a specific category. So there's a belongs to association here. And we want some kind of admin interface to manage these products. So let's use Active Admin here. The first step is to go to your gem file and add the Active Admin gem there. And notice that this is a Rails 3.1 application. And if you're using Rail Active Admin with Rails 3.1, then make sure you also use the SAS Rails gem because Active Admin depends on this. If you're using a 3.0 application, then you don't need to include SAS Rails. And then run the bundle command to install the gem. And then run the Rails Generate Active Admin install command to install the necessary files to get it set up. Now notice that this command also provides further instructions for some additional setup, such as adding the host option to your uh, mailer config in the development environment, uh, making sure you have a root URL, and adding your notice and alert options in your layout file. Now I've already done all of this in this application, so I don't need to do this setup. Now that command also generated some migrations, so make sure you run the migrate command uh, to handle all of those. Now if you check out the active admin documentation, you'll notice that it generates an initial user with this information, and you can use this to log in initially. Now you may want to customize this functionality, and you can do that inside of the migration file that was generated. So if we point our browser to localhost port 3000 slash admin, we should get a login form where we can type in that initial user information. Let's check remember me and say login. So here's our fancy admin interface, but currently it doesn't have much. Uh, we know we want to manage products, so let's first add our products resource here. And we can do that by running Rails Generate Active Admin Resource and then pass in the name of the resource, in this case, product. And you'll notice that this simply generates a products.rb file under the app admin directory. And that's where you can go to customize how it works. So now when we go back to our admin interface, you can see we have an option here for products here in the top. And notice that this is a fully featured admin interface for managing our products uh, that was just created instantly. And we have options to sort the products by various attributes. We can even filter them by any attributes. And notice that it automatically detected our belongs to association here because our product belongs to a category. So we can select a category and just filter the results based off of that. Really, really cool. And that works as well when creating new products. Uh, we can select a category that it belongs to, automatically all set up for us. But now what if you want to customize any of this functionality? Well, that's quite easy to do as well. Let's start off by customizing this index page here and maybe uh, trimming down the number of columns that we have present on this uh, products list here. To do this, we just have to go to the app admin products file that was generated earlier, and then customize this through simple Ruby code. And you just make a call to the index method, and then pass it a block if you want to customize that index page there. And you can specify any number of columns you want here. So we can have column name, that'll be the product's name. We can say we want the category. We can say we want the release at attribute and the price here. So we'll have those four columns in our index page. So now if we reload our products page, you can see that it's just limited to those four columns here. And notice that our category association was automatically detected here as well and filled in, really nice. But what if we want to customize these a little bit further? Now, if you want to change the title of a column, you can just pass that in as the first argument. For example, this released at attribute here, we can say, maybe call it release date instead and that'll show up as the title of that column. If you want to change the contents of the column, like the, the values for a given product, you can pass in a block. For example, our price column, I want it to be more formatted as a price, including the dollar sign and so on. So I can pass in a block here, and the product model for that given row will be passed in to that block. And I can return anything 
inside of here and that will be returned as the value of that given column. Now we have access to the helper methods in here as well. So we can say number to currency and then pass in our product price and that will properly format the price like you would inside of a Rails template. So now if we reload this page here, you can see our release date column is properly totalized and our prices have dollar signs in them. So that works. But you may notice that our price column here is no longer sortable because we customize the value that's returned. And also we don't have edit or destroy links here anymore. So let's fix that. So whenever you're using a block like this to customize the value, it's a good idea to pass in the sortable option so that you can tell uh, Active Admin how to sort it. So we'll sort by the price column and we can add default actions call at the end here to add that show edit and destroy links. So let's reload the page and that's looking really good. Now what if we wanted to change the alignment of our prices so they're all aligned on the right side of the column here. Now we could do the text alignment through CSS but first we need some way to reference this price value through our style sheet. And Active Admin provides a way to generate HTML that's very similar to Markaby. All you have to do is call the name of the tag that you want to generate. So if we want to generate a div here, just call div and then pass in a block and whatever is returned from this block will be the content of that div. So we could put our price inside of here and this way we can provide a class attribute on this div tag and we'll just say price here. So that way we're able to reference our price value inside of here. And then any custom CSS code can go inside of the Active Admin style sheet file under the app assets directory if you're using Rails 3.1. So inside of here, we'll just add a price call and then we'll just uh, text align to the right side there. So now when we reload our page, you can see that our prices are all right side aligned. Awesome. Another great feature of Active Admin is scopes. And this is like a preset filter. So what you can do inside of your uh, admin config is just call scope and then pass in the name of a scope in your model, such as unreleased. And then we just have to make that scope inside of our product model. So let's call scope, unreleased, and then say where our released at column is nil. So that way we have a quick way to access unreleased products. Now we can hit reload here and you can see that we have our scope where we can just click on it and instantly access the unreleased products. Really neat. Now let's move on to customizing the way the dashboard looks because right now it's empty and it would be nice if we had maybe showing the most recent products here on this dashboard. We can customize the dashboard by going into the app admin dashboards file very similar to how we customize resources. And notice that there's some nice documentation here in the comments. And we can just add a dashboard section by calling section here and then passing a name such as recent products, and then pass in, passing in a block. Now let's say we want to put our recent release products in a table, and we could do that inside of Active Admin by calling table four and then passing in an array of products such as uh, product order by the uh, released at attribute in descending order, and then limit it to the most recent five, and then pass it in a block. And we can add columns inside of here exactly like we did inside of our index action. So we want a column for our name and a column for uh, the released at attribute. And let's say we also want a link down here, maybe in a strong tag saying uh, view all products. And then linking to the admin products path. There we go. So if we reload our dashboard here, you can see we now have a list of the five most recent products, including the release date, and a link to view all the products. Awesome. Uh, it would be nice though if we had a link on each of these products' names that go to that specific product in our admin page. And to remember how to customize the value of a column, you just pass in a block just like we did with the price column. So we could say uh, we want to pass in a block and our product is passed in here. So let's link to our product, our product name, and call admin product path and pass in our product uh, to link to it. Now there is a little tip here if you're linking to a specific product, a slightly shorter way is just to pass in an array, giving an admin as a symbol as the first argument, and then just passing in the product and that'll link to that specific product page as well.
reload our dashboard here, and our links look like they work. Yay! Now there is a gotcha to be aware of when working with Active Admin in a Rails 3.1 application, and you can see that by going back to the main site. So we'll go to the main application here, and notice it doesn't look quite right, and that's because it's loading in the Active Admin stylesheet file here in our Rails 3.1 app. So the problem is that Rails 3.1 will include all style sheets by default because in our manifest of our application CSS it says require tree and it's going to include all of the style sheets here. But we don't want that. And really this isn't a good idea to do anyway because it's a better idea to have more control over the load order of your style sheets and so on. So instead of using require tree in a Rails 3.1 app, I recommend just requiring each of the files individually, such as require products and that will load just this current application CSS and our product style sheet. Now an even better solution is to switch over to the sass import command if you're using that. So for example here in our .css file, our application.css, we can switch over to sass by adding .scss at the end, and then we can do away with the entire manifest at the top here and just use the import command and just say products like that. So that way we can import files specifically. The advantage of this is that we can access the SAS functions or whatever else we may define here. So let's try this out by reloading this page here. And hey, that works great because we're no longer including the admin style sheet. Now the last thing I wanted to show you here is how to do some global configuration because there's another config file active admin provides under config initializers directory here. And this allows you to do some more global configuration, such as changing the overall title of the site. So we could say it's Ryan's store here. And there's a lot of other options, but they're nicely documented here, so I'll leave it up to you uh, to read that. Now you'll need to restart your server for that initializer config to take place, but if I reload here now, you notice that the store name is updated. And that about wraps up this episode, but there's so much more to Active Admin that I haven't shown you here, so I encourage you to uh, explore the documentation. Uh, you can customize the various filter options you supply. You can change the look of the show page here. You can add sidebars to this page. Uh, you can customize the form completely. It uses Formtastic internally and so forth. Uh, again, I encourage you to explore the documentation and a really nice solution here. So check out Active Admin. Back in episode 193, I covered how to create a tableless model. That is, I needed to use some of the features of Active Record, but I did not want it to be backed by the database. Now, the technique I showed there is quite a bit of a hack because it's something that Active Record wasn't designed to do. But now in Rails 3.0, we now have a feature called Active Model, which makes this much nicer. Now, before I get into the details of Active Model, let me first describe what we have in our application. So here's a contact us form, kind of a classic example of this, and that I created this contact form through a scaffolding. So there's a model called message, which is currently backed by active record, which means we're currently managing messages through our database. But I don't want that. I want to make this a tableless model so that we're just sending emails through this form and not managing them in the database. Now it's a good idea whenever you're in this situation to really double check yourself and make sure that your requirements are to have a tableless model because there are often good side effects of storing the records in the database. It acts as a good backup. It also makes it easier to move uh, the message sending into a queue and it's a, in a background process. But for these specific requirements and in this example, let's just make this a tableless model. Now if we dive into the code of our message model, you can see that it currently inherits from active record base but we don't want that because we don't want it to uh, have a database backend. So let's remove that. But now we have a problem. Our validation functionality will not work because that's what Active Record provides us. So we need to pull that functionality back using Active Model. Now, if we take a look at the Rails 3 source code itself, you can see that Active Model is listed here right next to Active Record. And so what the core team did is took everything in Active Record that was not specific to the database backend and moved it out into Active Model. So Active Record still relies heavily on Active Model for doing all this functionality that's not specific to the database. So that you know Active Model is well tested and fully featured. So it's great for you to use outside of Active Record. So if we take a look at the contents of Active Model, you can easily see what functionality it provides, such as callbacks and dirty tracking. 
and serialization and even validations. And this is exactly what we're looking for here. So if we take a look at the contents of this file, we can see the built-in documentation here. And you can see it's fairly easy to use. Basically just include the validations module and then just provide getter methods for the attributes which you're calling validations on. So going back to our message model, we can include that validations module and then add some accessor methods for our name, email, and content columns. Now this is enough to get our validation functionality working, but it's not enough to get our model to behave like our controller expects it to. So if we take a look at our controller, you can see right now it's just basic scaffolding where we create a new message passing in our attributes and then we try to save the message. But obviously this won't work now because we no longer have a database backed model. So this new method here won't work because we don't have an initialized method which takes a hash of attributes. We can create that. And also save won't work obviously because uh, we aren't trying to save the record anymore. Instead, let's just check if it's valid because we have some validations on our model. And then we'll just send it if it is. So the last thing we need to do is going back to our message model here is now define initialize method which now takes a hash of attributes and we'll have it default to an empty hash. And so in here we just want to loop through all of these attributes and we have our name and our value for each attribute and we just want to assign the value which is passed in here. So we can use the send method to assign access that accessor method. Uh, we'll just say our name with an equal sign will be that access method and we'll just assign our value to that. And so now each attribute that's passed into this initialize method will trigger that given setter method and assign that attribute. Now we can try reloading our page here and see if this functionality works. And uh, oh, it doesn't. We get this mirror error message undefined method to key on our message model and that's inside of our form four call. So obviously Rails itself is expecting our model to have some functionality that it does not support. So we need to add that. Now rather than guessing everything that Rails expects our model to include, uh, there's a nice lint test included inside of Active Model, which allows you to easily check whether or not your given custom model uh, behaves like Rails expects a model to behave. So you basically just include this lint test module into your test case, and that will check uh, its functionality. You can see two key here is already mentioned at the top and is actually a fairly short file and there's really not a lot that Rails 3 models are expected to behave like. Now in this case here we can easily get our lint test passing by including a couple modules. So the first one here is conversion and this basically provides that two key method and several others for converting it into various forms. Um, so basically all you have to do is define this persisted method which we're going to just have false because it's not a, a persisted model um, and that way uh, it can handle the two key and two param behavior properly. The only other module we need to add is the naming module and actually you just extend this module because it adds some class methods so you just extend that and that's all you have to do. So going back to our message model we just need to add the uh, conversion module and extend the naming module. And then finally just add the persisted method and have it return false. And that way our conversion module will know how to behave. So now if we reload our page here, hey, it's all working. And now our message model meets all the requirements that Rails 3 relies on in a model. We could even try submitting this form here. And you can see that, well, validations are working too. So this is all functioning properly. Now I've only covered a little bit of what Active Model provides you, but hopefully it's enough to get you started uh, exploring it on your own. I just encourage you to download the Rails 3 repository, open up the Active Model directory, and just explore the various modules that it provides. And really it's well documented and well structured, so just find something you think you might find useful, uh, just check out the code, and you'll see a lot of documentation explaining how to get it up and running in your app. So whether you're building a simple tableless model like I did in this episode or a fully featured ORM, uh, I encourage you to check out Active Model because it provides a lot of features that uh, I think you'll find useful.